Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we have SK Hynix SSD. I see those come in every now and then and sometimes they come in in a full size uh, 2280. Sometimes they come in in a cut down form. Uh, today is no exception. We're going to try to get some data off of this unit. Our options are quite limited to what we can do with those devices because uh, this is not a very um, component rich SSD. Most of it is uh, ground plane. We have some power circuitry right here and we have this big chip. Now this big chip guys those of you who follow this channel may have seen it before this kind of uh, device can be used on um, SSDs like this but also we see them inside of uh, Surface um, device. Surface, uh, Microsoft Surface, uh, they use these chips right on their logic boards and that's what they look like when they're removed. So when they're removed they can go into a socket such as this one. Uh, this is for Toshiba and Intel chips and Samsung's. For SK Hynix we need to use a separate SK Hynix version which is a little bit different but in, in uh, essence it's the same type of device and the communication with it is the same. So what options do we have? Like the simplest thing here would be for us to remove this memory chip and uh, put it in a socket because we're gonna bypass everything else that is on the board because the data is independently stored inside of this chip and it has a um, PCI Express interface which we can use um, with the help of our adapter. Do we need the adapter or not? In this case we're gonna try to work without the adapter because this is technically an adapter. Before those adapters with uh, a socket existed I used to use these <laughs> boards to transplant memory chips onto them. So you can uh, remove the component, reball it and mount it onto this device. This is what I used to do for surfaces until these easy adapters came around. If we plug in our unit into PC3000, let's see what sort of response we get, what sort of feedback we get. So this is screwed in. We have portable connected port zero Okay, so when the device is making this noise, there's a short. Short to ground somewhere right at the interface. Got to check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the SSD after it's been depowered. And let's inspect this guy. So if we have a short, it's going to produce this noise. Let's hop onto the ground. First of all, let's test this diode out. So I'm going to get it to a diode testing mode first. Right where the line is, we put the black probe where there's no line we got a red probe yo we have a short in here we have a short in here so what can it be guys it definitely could be a bad uh, um, diode obviously if this is ringing right now we're gonna have uh, same type of ringing on these components also Yep, these are also ringing down on the ground on both ends. All right, so let's inject some voltage and see what it is that we have problems with. So to inject voltage, I have this short killer tool and I set up like this probe with the alligator clip to assist me so I'm gonna set it to one volt injection uh, let's get some cold spray zoom out 
alligator clip will go on the back here where the ground is oh did you see I just barely touched it look at this I barely touched this and this one heats up right away let's see once again you see the frost on it and it's instantly gone before these two so they're gonna be getting warm but only because this thing is developing heat all right, so we think I think we found our weak link. Let's um, take it out. Short killer can be turned off now. I think I even see like a fracture in it. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it, but it looks like there is a fracture in it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take out this component and slide it over to one only one of the terminals and then we can uh, pull test it see if it's uh, in short if it's in short we can just uh, probably uh, grab a device that I already worked on in the past that did need the chip removed because the board wasn't a problematic one can take this one off of it and swap it out now we can just probably swap it out right now but I wanted to show you guys how the uh, component needs to be tested. I'm gonna add a little bit of flux here. And uh, the tool I'm gonna use is the set of hot tweezers, which look like this. There, it's off and We can just uh, either mount it to one of the pads, only on one side, or just lay it down like this. We're gonna use the same technique on our multimeter. Oh yeah, guys, this is a uh, closed circuit. So it's, uh, it's a bad component. Let's take this component from our neighbor board good old neighbor we're here to borrow a cup of sugar or a cap cap would do just uh, just fine as well I'll remove this capacitor and I'll show you what that capacitor does and how that sounds Okay, so this comp this capacitor is also taken out. Grab our probes. Oh, look at that. It's not making any noise. It's making noise like this, but not on the opposite ends. So, um, next step. We don't probably need to put that thing back in there. It depends on... what it does but since we already have it might as well just make this SSD great again
something's up with these tweezers. They're just a little bit misaligned and it's... It's harder to get a grip on the, on the component properly. I'll deal with that after the video is done. Okay, and the final test, well, not final, but final test with the meter. Yeah, you see, we don't have a problem here anymore. No sound. And if we go into testing uh, of the diode, the diode wasn't a problem either, obviously, because this is now fixed. And we got a single beep. Let's go ahead and power this up and see if it's gonna make those beeping noises again. I bet they will go away. We get uh, PHY come up, which is always a great sign. And voila, we enter the utility. We don't have a busy status. We have the ID SK Hynix 256. If we go into sector edit, there is our boot sector. And uh, if we hop into, let's say, something like this, we should see some data in there. And we do. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and clone this thing out. And once the image is produced, the customer can be notified about the good news that their device has been fixed and they are free to go after they pay the bill. So if you have a problem with your SSD that needs fixing guys, link in the description, fill out your request form, send it in, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, bang it out for you. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're new here, and I'll see you all in the next episode.